Welcome to the 2022 season of Science Olympiad. This is an instructional video on one of the new events for this year on the building category uh, called Bridges. And the tech uh, committee had created a template for those students who aren't familiar with the building events as a good starting point uh, for learning how to make compliant bridges for this competition. Now this instructional video is not the answer to the competition, but it gives you a starting point to learn from and get uh, skills for construction and testing. Now this video is separated into five different sections. Preparation, the truss assembly, bridge assembly, compliance check, and test results. So this particular part of this video is section number one called preparation. Now Science Olympiad has provided uh, on their website a file, it's a PDF file of a template, which is a two-page document that looks like this, that provides you uh, the, some of the pieces and all that to make a truss design bridge. And so we'll be using this, so make sure you print out that two-page um, file. And also make sure with the use of a ruler um, that uh, your dimensions are correct and they are to scale before you go forward. You wouldn't want to print out a, a, a template that is not to scale. And especially note that there is matchup lines that are here on the template for you to be able to piece these two pieces together to be able to make uh, the full scale bridge that's needed for this competition. Also, you'll need some tools. Um, the tools are identified here. Um, general uh, uh, board uh, here, this could be a, a drop ceiling board or some other kind of foam board. I, I use a drop ceiling board and I put a graph paper on it and I covered with uh, packing tape, that clear packing tape. So it gives a good, good surface for me to be able to put uh, push pins in uh, to be able to put alongside the wood to guide where the wood needs to be. Also, I use uh, crazy glue. It's a gap filling glue. It's a five to 10 second cure. Razor blade, pencils, rulers, pens. Uh, and I have a little, little uh, cutter here. This is not an X-Acto blade, but it's an actual little saw that I use to cut some of the members. Um, and a general ruler. Uh, those kinds of things. Also, you'll need to have wood. And if you look at um, the, uh, the template, it specifies the member dimensions of the wood. So on one of the pages, it happens to be right here. And so you'll see there's a one quarter by one eighth uh, uh, pieces, uh, 16 by 16 and one eighth by one eighth. You'll need uh, to have probably three of the one quarter by one eighth pieces. Uh, and they look like, uh, like this uh, piece here. And you'll probably need uh, three or four of the 16th by 16th, which will look like this. And you'll probably need two of the 1 8 by 1 8 pieces that look like this. So you'll need a bundle of wood, a variety of pieces in order to be able to make this, uh, this bridge. So make sure you have the wood to be able to start. Okay, so um, now we're going to do the setup. Again, I've printed out the template. And I'm going to make sure that I have a dimension check by looking at this block over here that says measure to make sure it's, it's five centimeters by five centimeters to make sure that I printed it out correctly and mine is printed out correctly. And then I'm going to cut along uh, one of the uh, matchup lines. And from now I can uh, pair up the two pieces like so. And I take a piece of tape and now I've got the full template and I center it on my, my board here. And I end up using a stapler uh, to kind of staple down the corners here to make sure it doesn't move. Okay, so now I have my template all laid out. Uh, it's the scale. I'm ready to go forward uh, to um, uh, cut members and start building the trusses. So this concludes the first part of the um, instructional video for the preparation activities. Okay, now we're ready to move on to the second portion of this um, uh, video, and that is the truss assembly. Now, before we get going, again, I wanted to remind you that it's very important that you print um, this template out to 100% and that you use these reference boxes here and here and these length measurements here to make sure that your template is to scale. 
Um, and again, uh, make sure you check all that uh, before we get started. Now, <clears throat> it's up to the students on whether they want to pre-cut some of these members exactly to the layout um, or overcut them and trim them later. Uh, it, it really um, is up to the students. I, I prefer the larger pieces. I'll pre-cut those to the length and I'll glue those. Uh, and then I'll probably overcut these other uh, members here on the truss uh, and I'll trim later. Um, but uh, throughout the whole process, I'm going to heavily utilize the pins uh, because it's very important for you to, to lay the members along where the template says, because you have to make two trusses, two of them, and they have to be identical, symmetrical, uh, and you use the pins and the template in order to make uh, both those uh, uh, correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-cut uh, this member here, which is the quarter by eighth, um, and I'm going to make the outside here in the center portion, and then I'm going to overcut and lay those other cross members here, uh, and then I'll let it dry uh, for about an hour, uh, and then I'll take it up off the template, uh, and I'll do a trimming, and I'll repeat that process again to make the second one. Now, you'll see these other members down here, these 1 8 by 1 8. Those won't be applied um, until after we go to the next step, which is the uh, bridge assembly. So for right now, we're going to do the truss itself, uh, which is this piece is here, okay? Okay, now this truss has uh, now been, uh, been glued. I'm gonna let it dry for about an hour. Uh, I'm going to uh, remove the pins and I'm going to trim it. And I have to go through that same process again for a second time because we have to have the other side of the truss. And so that whole process will be repeated again. I would even suggest using the same pin hole so that you get exactly the location of those members uh, as they were placed. Okay, I let the... Um, the first truss dry and I removed it from the template and then uh, made the second truss. So now I have two trusses here. Um, I'll remove the pins on this one because I've allowed it uh, to dry for about an hour. And then I will take both of these and trim them and make them clean to get them ready for the next step, which is the, uh, the bridge assembly. And so I'll have two identical uh, trusses that I'll be using to, uh, to build up the sides of the uh, of the bridge assembly. Okay, now we're on to section three of the, the video, and that is the bridge assembly. Um, and so now we've completed two of the trusses. I've trimmed them so that they are identical. It's important that they are identical. And uh, we're going to be using this part of the template now, uh, but uh, you should be uh, uh, attentive to these other pieces. These are the 1 8 by 1 8 pieces that are across the bottom here. Um, that uh, once we put the trusses up, we're going to use that to secure the base. Uh, and then again, we're going to go across the top and secure the top. Uh, and then finally, the two pieces here that are going to be supporting the load, the load block assembly. Now, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin um, the trusses so that they're standing straight up. It'll look kind of like this. Uh, and I'm going to use um, uh, a tool. It could be anything from a wooden block to a plastic block, or even a, you know, a can of soup. Those kinds of things are gonna help me keep these trusses completely perpendicular as I put those support uh, pieces on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, to um, um, pin the trusses onto this part of the template. I'm going to cut these pieces. It looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 of those pieces, and I'm gonna be using those um, to make sure that uh, I keep the uh, the trusses perpendicular, uh, and so uh, here we uh, here we go.
Okay, so there you go. Um, there's the, um, the two trusses uh, standing completely vertical. Uh, and we have support members across the base here uh, that keep the base um, uh, intact and then another piece across the top. Um, I did um, um, glue pieces that were a little bit longer than what we need. So after I let this uh, dry overnight, I'm going to uh, uh, trim this to make it uh, all uh, clean looking. Uh, and then uh, that would uh, complete this part of the section of the bridge assembly. Uh, and then we'll uh, look at how we're going to go into the next step, which is the fourth step, uh, where we take a look at the compliance side and we make, make sure that we meet all the requirements. Okay, now that uh, I've let the structure dry for several hours, um, I can now take it uh, apart and off of the template. And so I'll do that now, and then I'll trim some of the excess pieces here to clean it up. Um, and then uh, we'll be complete with the bridge assembly. Um, so um, I'll uh, take it off here, remove the pins, and then uh, uh, sh shave these pieces off. All right, well, there you go. Um, and there is the, uh, the bridge um, in its full design here just before I finalize the uh, trimming. Okay, so now I've uh, completed the trimming activity uh, and uh, the, the bridge is now uh, complete. Um, it looks very symmetrical, very clean lines. Looks just exactly like the template, um, as you can see here and here. And so we're, now we're ready to move on to the uh, compliance check uh, process um, and so uh, we'll verify that it meets all its requirements and get uh, get it ready for submission for testing. Okay now that we've uh, finished the third uh, stage we're moving on to the fourth uh, stage which is the compliance checks uh, and again we have our completed assembly it's dried it's been trimmed and we're going to make sure that it meets all of the critical uh, dimensional requirements uh, before we go into competition. So you may see something like this um, at a, a check-in, or it's good to create something like this uh, for our own use to have the lines marked that are critical for the division B uh, and uh, mimics the kind of uh, test setup that you would have. And normally um, what you would see are these wooden blocks that would uh, uh, be on a test stand um, and you would place the, the bridge on top of it like, like such. Um, and so you can see that it meets the span requirements. That's the 35 centimeter span requirement. Also, um, you, can, you can show that the load block assembly uh, can be mounted to it, which is on the top here like such. Um, and so that's a, that shows that it, it meets that, uh, that requirement as well. Um, and also uh, that the, uh, the structure uh, where the load block uh, goes has to be greater than 10 centimeters. And this one is a just at about 11 centimeters here. So um, we're, uh, we're well within that uh, requirement. It's like 10 and a half uh, centimeters. Um, and the last most uh, important is a requirement for a pass-through block. Uh, now that's to, to make the bridge actually operate uh, like normal bridges do with buses, trains, and cars. And so it looks, it looks something similar to this where we're gonna take a block um, that's uh, centimeters tall, uh, seven centimeters tall and four centimeters uh, wide and we're going to pass it through the bridge, uh, unobstructed, if you will, uh, to show that the bridge has the ability to take an object of that size and go all the way, all the way through as such. And so we'll be demonstrating that. Uh, and so now we've got uh, you know, a completely compliant uh, bridge that we can go on and enter in for competition, uh, and we'll do a formal uh, weigh-in uh, and uh, a load test. So, uh, that pretty much covers the compliance checks here. We've um, made the structure with all the uh, wood requirements. It's all made out of basswood. Um, we have the, the span requirements. We have the, the load block height. We have the pass-through block. We have the ability to, to hold the, uh, the um, load block. So I think uh, we're all good to go, and we're ready for, uh, for, this, uh, for this bridge to go uh, into competition. So uh, we're going to move on to the next stage. Here we've uh, weighed the completed bridge. It's right at 15 grams, so we'll use that as our official mass of the uh, structure uh, going into um, the, uh, the, the testing. So it's right at 15 
0.00 grams. All right, now we're going to go to our fifth and final stage of this uh, uh, guidance video, and that is the test results. As you can see, I already have the bridge onto the test stand. This is a traditional hopper test stand. I've already weighed out the, the, uh, the load to be 15.2 kilograms, and I've already suspended the empty bucket um, uh, with the load block, and I am ready to start doing the test. And so the bridge weighed in at right at 15 grams, so I'll use that as the mass of the bridge, and we'll see how much uh, it uh, holds as far as the load. So now I'm going to do a high-speed video um, so we can get a slow motion uh, frame by frame to see if and where uh, the member breaks uh, on this design.